Today we're going to learn how to size a solar power system in the most simplest way possible. I am going to give you guys a certain watt hour load and we're going to figure out what size battery we need with a certain amount of days of autonomy or how many days of backup and we're going to figure out what size solar array will charge that battery in a decent amount of time. So let's say we have a laptop and it takes 120 watts and you want to run it for five hours a day. All you have to do is multiply the consumption by the hours that you are using it for. And so 120 multiplied by five is 600. And so what we need is a battery that can supply 600 watt hours for our given load every single day. But we want to have enough time for backup or days of autonomy. So typically a good figure is three to five days of autonomy. So what this means is if you have a cloudy or rainy day, you will have enough backup power to power your loads during that duration of reduced power output of your solar system. So all you do is multiply this by three. So 600 times three is 1800 watt hours. And 1800 watt hours is the total size of our battery, but this is the usable size. So understand that if you have a thousand watt hour lithium battery, it will deliver 1000 watt hours. Typically the recommendation for lead acid batteries, it's 50% depth of discharge. That means you can only use half of the batteries rated capacity. So if you have a lead acid battery that is rated for 1000 watt hours, you can only use 500 watt hours. So for this example, a Battleborn lithium iron phosphate battery will deliver 1200 watt hours. So you could say that you need at least two of them to fulfill this recommendation. So this system to be able to power our laptop consistently without any problems and with three days of backup will take two Battleborn batteries. Or you could say they will take 400 amp hours of lead acid batteries at a standard depth of discharge of 50%. And you'll notice that two Battleborn batteries will deliver 2400 watt hours. So typically you want to round the number up. And also you can't stick with one battery, so you have to round the number up if you want to fulfill the load requirement with three days of autonomy. If you live in a very sunny location, you don't need this large of a battery. You could probably get by with this small. Like here in Las Vegas, I could easily power this load with a 600 watt hour battery because I know I'll never really need that many days of backup power. And even on the bad days, I'll still be able to generate enough power to power this load. So it really depends on your local weather conditions and other factors such as your latitude. So for this laptop to run it for five hours a day with three days of backup, you want two Battleborn batteries or four 100 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries. Sorry about my handwriting, you guys get the idea, all right? We're just trying to make it easy. So now we need to figure out what size solar array will charge these two Battleborn batteries in one day. And so we need to be able to charge 2,400 watt hours in one day. So how do we determine the size of the solar array? Typically the recommended figure in the United States is that you get five hours of good sunshine. And so this makes our life very easy. If you are using an MPPT in standard test condition solar panels, all you need to do is take the size of your battery in watt hours and divide it by five because overall, most of the United States, you will get five hours of sunshine and that's how much power in watts it will be required to charge up this battery in one day. So 2,400 divided by five is 480 watts. So we need an array that is 480 watts in size. And because solar panels are cheap, you're gonna wanna bump this up to 600 watts for sure. And that's a pretty simple recommendation, two Battleborn batteries or four lead acid batteries in a 600 watt array. Now that we know the battery needs to be this size and the solar array needs to be this size, we're gonna figure out what size solar charge controller we need to charge a 12 volt, 2,400 watt hour battery with a 600 watt solar array. And this is super simple. You just take your solar array size and you divide it by the battery voltage. So if this is a 12 volt battery and there are two battle borns in parallel, we just take this number and divide it by 12. And that will give us 50. And this is the amps required by our solar charge controller to be able to support this solar panel array at this voltage because the wattage divided by the voltage will give you the amperage. And so this is the rating at the output. If you are sizing a solar charge controller for a system, you typically want to make it larger than necessary. And typically they're in 20 amp increments at this size. So I would definitely be going with a 60 amp 
controller and that's also for efficiency reasons. And so using a 60 amp controller will support our 600 watt solar panel array. And because we have a 2,400 watt hour battery, let's say we want to power a microwave for 30 minutes a day. We could also throw that into the equation. Let's say we're not using the laptop and we want to power a microwave for 30 minutes a day. Let's say the microwave uses 1,000 watts continuously. So that means it will use 500 watt hours in 30 minutes. So what we can say is that this battery can easily support our microwave and laptop depending on how we use it. Depending on how many days of backup will determine our use. If it's sunny every day for the next week, you can use a lot more power than our recommended 120 watts. So in this instance, with this large of a battery, we have a lot of power to work with if it's sunny outside. If it's cold and cloudy, you can't use the bigger appliances and you need to reduce your load so that you have that full three days of backup. But for most people, this size system with this battery and this solar array and this solar charge controller will be able to power a lot of good stuff. And when it comes to solar, you wanna make it as big as possible. Solar panel arrays are very cheap, solar charge controllers are cheap, but batteries are very, very, dreadfully expensive, unfortunately. I mean, solar panels now, you can get them for 50 cents a watt or cheaper used. You can even buy sun power cells for dirt cheap from like Santan Solar. So I mean, this is something that you wanna bump up as much as possible. I've actually done it in the past in sunny locations. I would cut this number in half and have like a tiny battery and I'd have such a large solar panel array that I could recharge it very quickly. And for this size system, this 600 watt array could charge this in less than a day. And that's typically good for like a battery that's a lead acid, you need to cycle it once a day or keep it at a high state of charge at the end of every single day so that it doesn't have too much degradation. If, if a lead acid battery is kept at a low state of charge for a prolonged duration, you will have increased internal damage on that battery. So you wanna keep it cycled once a day and at a high state of charge as long as possible. But yeah, that's pretty simple, you know, for that laptop. I mean, this is super simple math that anybody can do. Now let's make this more fun. Let's take the 600 watt array and divide it by 24 and figure out what size controller we need. So 600 divided by 24 is 25. So we need a 25 amp controller that can handle a 24 volt battery. But think about how much cheaper a 25 amp controller is over a 50 or a 60 amp controller. This one, of course, we would wanna bump it up to 30 amps, but you're getting a huge cost savings by using a 24 volt battery. And this is why you can save literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars by bumping up your voltage of your battery to 24 volts. I have other videos that cover the pros and cons and how to do that and how to use converters so you can still use 12 volt appliances. But keep that in mind, when you have a large array and a large solar charge controller and you bump up the battery voltage, it will decrease the cost of the system substantially. Also the cost in wire, which we need to make another video about that, can decrease substantially with a higher voltage system. Because if you're using a 12 volt system with this size battery and you're pushing large loads, the wires are gonna be very thick and copper is not cheap. If you're pushing large loads and you have a 48 volt or 24 volt system, it will be a lot smaller in wire, which means reduced cost. But again, I have a whole other video that goes much into deeper details on that topic. So let's say we wanna charge this battery with a DC to DC charger. Let's say that you drive your RV or van every single day and you have a small solar power system and you wanna power the solar battery with your alternator safely. So let's figure that out. So let's say we take the Renogy one and they have a 20 and a 40 amp one. Let's say that we buy the 40 amp one and we want to know how fast it can charge this battery. Well, what we need to do is figure out how many watts this is pushing. So we have 40 amps as the output from the alternator with the DC to DC charger and the battery voltage is 12 volts. So 40 times 12 and the answer is 480. And so those two numbers divided by each other give us five. So that means it'll take five hours for the DC to DC Renogy charger to charge up our two Battleborn batteries. It'll take five hours of driving. Most people are not gonna deeply discharge it all the way. Typically, you know, 50% depth of discharge with these would make more sense. So it would take like two and a half hours of driving a day for most people to charge up their battery. And so as you notice, we're just messing with watts, watt hours, kilowatt hours to figure out 
how long it takes to do certain things or how to store power or how to you know charge up a battery in a specified amount of time for our given conditions. If this video lost you and you don't understand watts, volts, and amps, please check out my beginner videos. You need to read those or check out my book. That's probably the easiest way to do it. It's like step by step. I show every single thing that you need to know and it makes it very easy to understand. This might be a little confusing because I'm rushing through it because it's a video. Another thing to consider is in my book, I have rules of thumb so that you don't have to use math or you have to use very little math. And I also have pre-calculated packages in the book and on the website that I have. So you guys can check that out as well. But if you want to, you know, power a specified load for a certain amount of time, this is the best way to do it. Now that we've done a simple example, let's do a more difficult example. Let's say we have an air conditioner and it's a small window air conditioner and it takes 500 watts to power. Let's say we want to power this for 24 hours a day because out here in the desert, I need to power one for that much time. So I'm kind of doing the math for that right now. So what you need to do is take this 500 watts and multiply it by 24. And this will give us 12,000. Because 1,000 watt hours equals one kilowatt hour, we can say that this is 12 kilowatt hours. And now what we wanna do is multiply it by three, and this is the days of autonomy. So that'll give us 36 kilowatt hours is the size of our battery bank to power this air conditioner with backup redundancy. And that is a very big battery pack, all right, you guys? And so that's like 30 Battleborn batteries. So we're talking like $30,000 here. Yeah, $30,000, wow. So now we need to figure out what size solar panel array will charge this size battery in one day. And this recommendation of three days of autonomy does not apply to some people. You guys might be looking at that and thinking, oh my gosh, that is so expensive. But if you live in Alaska and you're trying to power large loads, you need to over panel your array, you are gonna need this size of a battery to consistently power your device 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. So that might look scary, but that's the true cost of powering a load with actual redundancy, it's expensive. And so just like we did before, we just need to take this and divide it by five. It will give you 7.2 thousand. So that means that we need a 7.2 kilowatt solar array to be able to charge this up. If you are actually building the system, you wanna bump this up to like nine or 10. I would say 10 kilowatt array for that size of a battery would be great. And now let's say that this solar array is charging a 48 volt battery. Let's figure out what size in amps we need to use for a solar charge controller. And so 10,000 divided by 48 for our battery bank voltage will give us 208 amps. This is the size of your solar charge controller. If your solar charge controller has overcurrent or over paneling protection, you could actually instead use like a 200 amp controller, or you could use two 100 amp controllers and have two separate arrays going through each controller. So it really depends on what you wanna do in your budget. It's funny though, through Chinese controllers, you can actually get a better deal instead of buying like an 80 amp, um, you can actually do better off with two 40 amp controllers. So it really depends on how much money you wanna spend. But if you can spend $30,000 on this battery bank, and then considering 10 kilowatt hours and 50 cents, um, per watt, you could say that that's 5,000 of um, solar panels. So we're looking at like 35,000 plus the copper, plus the mounting, plus the permits and stuff like that, safety permits for mounting that large of a ground array. We're looking at like a $40,000 system right here, which is not bad considering what we're powering. We're powering a pretty large load 24 hours a day. I mean, think about if we use this to charge up a Tesla. In my battery pack in the Tesla is 60 kilowatt hours, it would only take two days to charge that thing. And that's with quite a bit of safety headroom. So that would give us actually 72 um, kilowatt hours and my battery is only 60, but considering the charging losses and conversion losses and also losses depending on what kind of battery we have and all the other losses throughout the system, you could say that I could charge my Tesla in two days with a $40,000 system, which that is pretty darn expensive. That's why it's not smart for most people to do a truly off-grid system for extremely large loads. You're better off using the grid as a load dump or as a battery and just having a huge solar panel array. But this is a very large system. If you just cut this system in half, like a $20,000 system, you could charge up a Tesla no problem given most people's daily driving habits. 
So that's pretty cool. And in my personal experience, after living off grid for 10 years, I've noticed that 5,000 watt hours for me has been great. Well, 5,000 watt hours can easily supply a normal person's living electrical needs. It's pretty easy to power a life with that. Um, a lot of times also over paneling your system is pretty fun to do. If you live far away from the equator, you're gonna have to bump up the size of your array. Um, it's unfortunate because when you're far from the equator and you want to over panel, um, you also have to deal with cold temperatures and with cold temperatures, especially in the morning, you have an increased output in the voltage and you can get a voltage spike that can burn out the solar charge controller. So when you do over panel it, what I like to do is have current protection so that if you do get that burst of power um, current wise, you'll be protected and you have to calculate that for your solar array. And then also the voltage, if it spikes, you wanna make sure that there's headroom. Usually it's like 25%. It really depends on what kind of control you're using because some of the ones that are UL listed already have safety headroom for voltage over voltage um, built in. The cheaper ones use cheap capacitors with lower voltage ratings and you will burn them out. And I've done that a couple of times. So be very careful. Some of them, you can hit that limit and keep it there for years. And then the cheaper ones, it will just destroy itself instantly. So that's where, you know, buying UL listed devices and, you know, calculating it all out, everything works out perfectly. But sometimes the cheaper stuff, it'll say it's a 40 amp controller, you push 40 amps and it burns it out in a couple weeks. So it really depends on what you're working with. But yeah, this is like a very large system and the last example was a small system. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I thought it was fun. I get these questions a lot and it's so simple. If you know how large your load is, and how long you wanna power it for, you can calculate any size system instantly. I mean, I do this all day long. Whenever I see new batteries and different prices and stuff, I just plug in these numbers. If you do not understand these watt hours and watts, please check out the beginner stuff. And it's only a couple equations. It's volts times amps equals watts. And once you know that and you can mess with the division, you can calculate any size system, grid tire off grid, it's super simple. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful and let me know what you guys think. Uh, please leave a comment below. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later, bye.